Hi there, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. So as you might be following me in the group page on Facebook or not, or maybe watching my other videos, you would know that I love watercolor and I love palettes and I do have plenty of them. As you can tell, there is a video on this channel about 21 palettes that I have, or I think it's 26. I'm not sure because I try not to count, but I saw these two palettes. This is one. The other one is not here yet. I'm going to get it this weekend, so I will be reviewing it too. But um, these Magello palettes I've had in the past, and I do have Magello watercolors, but not necessarily in the palettes. This one does have the Magello. Um, and as you can tell, I have been very very bad in putting a ton of watercolor in here and not letting it dry before I shut the thing so I have a complete mess but I love it because this is my messy palette so I do use this one as my messy one and this one over here is more of my clean palette which has been my favorite Magello palette for a long time this is the bulletproof glass palette it's not actually glass it's just this special um, kind of like plastic that does not stain. But that being said, you can use a white sponge on any of these and none of them will, you know, really stain. You can get them clean. This is currently my favorite palette um, as far as the Magellos go. I really love it. I like the arrangement of it. I like the fact that it's got different kinds of wells. So I'm excited to open this next one and compare it and see because I am looking for a watercolor palette to to dedicate to my um, super granulating colors because currently I have them in a wood box and they are um, there's not like a lot of mixing area and granulating colors need a lot of water to be able to mix them so I think it's just good to get a new palette so this one is the triple decker palette and it holds 52 wells this is from Magello um, and the triple decker palette. I have never had a triple decker before actually, cause none of them, I've had ones where the, the mixing palette removes, but I've never had one that actually layers. So this is something new and I don't think they had this when I was first choosing watercolor palettes. So here's how this goes. So this, there's an extra plate. And it's got a row of wells that are half the size of the exterior wells and they fit right in there. Don't overload the paint <laughs> like me. Um, I did notice that now the Magello palettes seem to be coming with these little white eraser, uh, which is smart because you can clean a lot better with these. Um, I love the fact that Magello has these really deep wells and I know you guys have asked me about other ones I've had in the past with very deep wells. This I like because they have these big mixing areas that also are wide enough for larger brushes. So if you're using like some of these large brushes, you can actually get them into the paint and you can wipe them off on these sides. That's what uh, the Magello palettes have as a really huge benefit for larger brushes. I also like the fact that even though it's a large footprint, you can tell it like takes up the whole space. You can still, the idea behind this triple decker for me is I could still do that with it and I have access to my paint. So if I plan my paint out pretty well, I can pretty much go ahead and use just this and mix and paint. And then these bottom ones would be, you know, something else that I would use, or we could probably do something like that if the paint's not really messy, but with me and granulating colors, it will be. Another option is I could probably put it like that and put it off to the side and I'd still have all this mixing area. Or if you want to really get crazy, we can do this and put it off to the side again and just have access to, you know, like some of it. It is a very large palette though. I can tell you that it's light, which is a good thing. Some palettes are a little heavier. So I can see why 
there's a benefit if you want to have this many colors on hand to have a triple decker because it's nice to be able to like kind of rearrange and pull these out. Now, once this has watercolor in it, of course, you're going to have to wait till the watercolor dries to be able to sh flip that out. Otherwise, it's going to be crazy or you're going to have to find something to get it out because there's not really like a, um, there's not a, a way that you can pull this out unless you stick your fingers in the watercolor. So you kind of have to do it like that, you know? Uh, let's see how else this will go. Will this fit in here? It will kind of, not really. It kind of isn't made to fit there, but it does, it does work. I wonder, no, cause it shifts too much. So it's pretty much, there's a little bubble there. So it's only made to fit there. Another thing you could do is, well, you know, for the sake of argument, I could literally just keep this side here. But this goes to show you that like, if you have limited space, how would you arrange these? I would say this would be great for the studio. Like this is a really nice access. And then I probably would put this side over here. And then I would be able to paint in the center. So that would be like most of the ideal. And then when I want to put it away, I'm just going to do that. And then I can close it. It's nice. I like this palette a lot, actually. I like the fact that it holds a lot more than the previous ones. Now let's line it up to my current favorite palette. So it's the same size as far as um, real estate. And when you open it, it's the same size, but that holds a lot more watercolor. So in that way, this is kind of like a real win for granulating color. Not that I ever run out. I really don't. And the thing I like about this is that there's three separate. So like I can keep all my blues, mix my pinks and purples and mix my yellows and oranges there. And then I have this extra little area, but this is not bad because literally blues and greens, um, purples, pinks, and yellows, or you can keep here. Now, the first thing I'm thinking is this is granulating color and I'm going to want to be able to work with this, right? Which kind of only gives me this mixing area, which is an ideal. This would be better. You know what I mean? But at the same time, when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, so this is the same profile laying this out is going to be the same as laying this out. So the same way that I would work with this, I would work with this. Now, a lot of times what I do with this one is I have my most used colors here and my least used colors here. And that way I can just set this up and I'm like basically pulling and mixing. And then I can still pull from up here as long as I don't over wet them and I can pull them into here. So, this is still a possibility and the way I function with that, I can still do that with this kind of arrangement. But again, I have so much more. Now it looks like this is the exact same amount of watercolor as this side here. So they function very, very similarly. In fact, I think this has a little bit more, um, more space. These look to be just as wide and just as good, but missing this last one here, which gives you more space here to like, you know, comb your brush out. And on this side, of course, it's great. I mean, you not only have this run, but you have this run here. And, you know, if you want to, the only thing I think they should pad is a little like something to pull this up with because tipping it over, you wouldn't be able to do it if it was wet. And there's no place really to put it. Well, you could do that. You know, it like kind of tips over. So in that way, you just pretty much want to leave it there and just have that extra run. So for granulation, I probably would put my mixers here and my granulating colors all on the outside, depending on how many I have. But again, I have another one coming in. So I'm not really sure which one is going to be my granulating paint color. Still, I really like this overall. Um, 
the thing I can see is to dry it. Like say you were working, so say you had wet paint and you were working this way, then you would have to leave it and let it dry. Otherwise you could pull it from here. So what it does do is it has these little holes so you can lift this at least. And that way you can put it together. I wonder if it doesn't matter which way, let's see. Yep, doesn't matter. So that's not too bad. So you might not be able to pull this one out, which you would need to, but you can pull this one out and you can either lay it in that way. I wonder if I can lay it in this way. Or I can lay it in that way. Yep, and it shuts. All right, good palette. Nope, it doesn't shut that way. Okay, see that's what you have me for. So you can only lay it in this way. And then it closes. Yep, it does. All right, there's the Magello Triple Decker palette for you. So what do you think? Which ones did you see here today that you liked the best? And which one do you think I would benefit from in using for my granulated palette so far? Do you like the bulletproof glass one or do you like the triple decker palette? Thanks for watching.